Good morning to you. It's daybreak at iFiber One News Radio, 712 now at iFiber One News. We've been offering up time on the morning show with candidates running for the different positions here in the 35th District, also for Mason County Commissioner. And uh, so we were going to have a forum a couple weeks ago. The weather didn't really uh, hold out for us, so we postponed that for the safety of everybody involved. And uh, now we've offered up the time and Happy to have in studio with me this morning, running for the 35th district position number one, it's Irene Bowling. Good morning, Irene. Hi. Thanks for coming on with me. It's my pleasure. Nice and early this morning. So we're just going to talk a little bit here, get a better chance for you to talk with us and the listeners about your, who you are, your ideas and visions, things like that. So briefly, give me kind of your opening statement, uh, who you are and why somebody would, would vote for you this, this year. Okay, yeah. Well, um, I'm from this area. My family moved here in the 1930s. I live up in Kitsap County. And I'm a lifelong educator. I've taught Olympic College, University of Maryland. I've had my own music school for 27 years. I've taught CK School District. Um, I have three grown children. My my youngest one is a senior at, at CK High School mm-hmm. right now. I've been married to the same wonderful guy for 37 years, and my parents uh, worked at PSNS, and my uncles were loggers here down in Mason County. So we're we're part of the 35th. For sure. Through and through. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Kitsap <clears throat> County and Mason County, and even the 35th district is, is very large. There's a big uh, different yes, di- uh, areas to the 35th. And in the Bremerton-Silverdale area, the rough population there is close to the whole population of Mason County. You know, roughly. Uh, so I just kind of want to know how you plan to, if you get elected, split the needs of those large areas in the district versus the smaller needs of people who are in like Matlock or, or even way down south in Little Rock in the 35th. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's certain core things that all people need, and that's a good education, jobs, access to jobs, good transportation to get to the jobs, good health care. You know, environmental concerns, like making sure that we live, you know, preserve what we've got here and our hunting and fishing, which everyone loves here Mm -hmm. in this area. And so those are things that I really feel are important and why we're living in the 35th LD. Um, It is true that we have a very diverse workforce between those three areas. Kitsap County is mainly the shipyard, Banger, you know, that that, Mm -hmm. uh, federal employees here in Mason County. We have, you know, the logging industry, which has had its, its share of hits over the years. And we have very high on unemployment in Mason County. So I would really like to focus on this particular county to try to get more work and get a better infrastructure and better transportation into this area. And then Thurston County, we have a lot of state employees. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. But as I mentioned earlier, the core issues are jobs, good health, opportunities for our kids, and a wonderful, preserve our wonderful environment. So let's talk about education. If you uh, are elected, this is the session. Yes. That <laughs> something has to finally be done uh, to uh, look at this McCleary decision from the state Supreme Court. What are some things that you're thinking of uh, specifically to either sponsor or write to help fill these gaps? And where do we see some of these major uh, differences in, in this McCleary decision? Right. I think at this point, everyone knows that this is a huge issue and yeah. that we depend, we have an over-reliance on our, our uh, terrible levy system. You know, up to 28% of our schools now are for basic things, even teacher salaries are paid by levies. And so, for instance, in Bellevue, where they don't have any problem passing those levies on property taxes um, versus Belfair, Um, There's a huge disparity between the quality and what we can offer our kids, and that's not right, and it's unconstitutional. So this is what we've got to really address. And so I think a levy swap is a possibility, which means that we tax everyone equally throughout the state, and that money is equally distributed throughout all the school districts. And that, so that would be a big advantage, especially for rural school districts. Would it also, though, go more towards the more affluent school districts, no. maybe in a higher proportion? No, 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 no. It would be equally distributed. And of course, the Seattle school districts and people over in that area may not be so happy about it. Sure. Um, but it would sure be a boon for us over here. Okay. Um, another um, issue would be making sure that we go through our system and and make sure that we're not wasting our money. I feel that there's a lot of uh, money on too high of salaries for superintendents. I think that those those could be cut. I think also that our testing systems cost millions of dollars. Actually, I think it's kind of a racket, frankly. And as an educator. 
you know, we're teaching to the test, and I don't think that's right, so I would like to change that. I think there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, billions of dollars wasted on uh, IT programs. I mean, even like the community college system, for instance, had a huge overrun of costs of millions of dollars for that. So there are lots of things that we could tighten up on. And, and really put people's feet to the fire. I think that's important, too, before we're asking people for more money. And then, of course, a lot of the big corporations, our state gives huge tax exemptions to them. Um, and that's something that could be re-examined. We have over 600 of those that have been identified through a bipartisan uh, committee, I might add. And we need to take action on some of those. And so um, when in the legislature, I would really like to look carefully at that and find out how we can generate more money from uh, the big corporations to help pay. In some of your education. some of your flyers you have out, another thing that you look uh, to a big deal with here is natural resources, and folks have the opportunity here in the 35th and throughout the whole state to vote on Initiative 732. This is a carbon emissions task uh, tax. How are you going to vote on this, and do you think it's good for the 35th district? I am not voting for that, and I already turned my ballot in, so I did not vote for it. Um, and I think that we have a big problem with our revenue right now for education. This has to be addressed first, so I'm not in, in favor for anything that's diverting funds in, into any other project. Um, however, I do think that we do need to approach uh, you know, obviously we've got an issue with acidification in the Hood Canal, and but I, I'm not sure that this initiative is, is really the full solution for it. The other one uh, that you talk about is protecting seniors, and coincidentally the state has another opportunity to vote on Initiative 1501. This is uh, hearing from both sides of this one. This is mm -hmm. on protecting seniors, uh, identity theft, and some other issues. Right. Tell me a little bit about your thoughts on this I one. I feel very strongly that this would be a good idea for us. Um, I have 95-year-old parents. My dad's a World War II vet, and I help take care of him. My sister and I and my husband uh, take care of my parents. And um, they have been scammed three times in the last five years. In, f in fact, I've asked them not to answer their phone anymore. Uh, because uh, there are real predators out there and they prey on once you get your ARP card or you know once you're over a certain age um, they definitely have you on their list and it's a it's a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide so I think anything that we can do to help protect people um, especially more vulnerable people um, the seniors we should do I also feel that we need to um, address prescription uh, drug costs there was an initiative that um, would have helped uh, initiate lowering out-of-pocket expenses for seniors and my opponent um, was one of 16 people only out of the whole house that voted against that and that's something that I don't like and I think that we definitely need to help our seniors. I mean, I know as a caretaker for my parents how difficult it is to protect them from predators, to protect them health care wise, and to make sure that they can afford their medication so they're not cutting their pills in half. Mm -hmm. You drove here this morning from the Bremerton Silverdale area down Highway 3 through Belfair with a lot of the construction going on. Let's talk a little bit about transportation this time. Uh, we have a, a, a very important piece of safety to the state to the country there up at uh, at the shipyard there right. uh, and we've got some problems in mason county they're always talking about the belfair bypass how are we going to help the 35th with transportation right okay well first of all i think that it's dragged on way too long millions of dollars were spent on studies for the whole thing especially the belfair bypass it's still not built yet and a lot of money has gone over to the Seattle area. Um, can't, obviously, they have huge traffic problems if you ever drive around in Seattle, and they need help over there, too. But we need legislators that are going to bring some of that money over into our district. I cannot believe that it takes like an hour and a half to go from my area all the way down here to Shelton. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're windy roads. They're dangerous roads. I drove here this morning. There's no lights on the roads. You know, it's a two-lane road, um, trees, water very dangerous so how can we develop business and industry and attract more people into our area without really good transportation now we do have 101 that's fine but that's from olympia up here mm -hmm. but we don't have anything basically from the shipyard which is one of the major employers of people in mason county so that that definitely needs to be addressed and we have a terrible death toll and, and you know traffic 
accidents all the time on that highway. So I, that would be one of my number one priorities is to get that going. One of the things that people say uh, across the state, I feel, is that, well, you know, Seattle is a big metropolitan. They, they get a, a bulk of the tax money uh, or, or things, money going to Seattle mm-hmm. from the budget in the state. You could almost say the same thing in, in a smaller sense as with the Bremerton Silverdale areas being a big portion of the 35th. How do you make sure that, that the funds are able to be then spread equitably throughout the whole 35th and not focus on those major mm-hmm. metropolitan areas? Well, because as a representative of the 35th, my first priority is the 35th, not Seattle mm-hmm. or not the rest of the state. But I you mean, see, and I guess what my saying question is, a lot of people you know, in eastern Washington or in Vancouver, Washington, are saying mm-hmm. our money is going to Seattle because it's a big city. Mm-hmm. If you're in the 35th, you could say if you're in Matlock or Little Rock, all my money, you know, is going to help the big city of Bremerton or Silverdale. Mm-hmm. Is there a way that mm-hmm. that you can work? You think to uh, make sure it's equitable to everybody in the district? Well, I think that you have to fight. I mean, it, you know, you have to be outspoken about it. You've got to get people rallied behind you. You've got to make sure that your taxpayers and the people that have voted you in are behind you in that project. And so people need to know that, you know, these things. It, that's what a legislature is all about. That's what politics is all about. And you need people that are fighters out there and that are going to be aggressive about it. They have to grab some of the money out of that golden pot. Mm-hmm. You know, now Norm Dix, who is a supporter of mine, I, I talked to him um, a couple of months ago exactly about this. I said, how did you manage to get so much money for Kitsap County and Bremerton and, and the shipyard? And he says, I fought. He says, it's jobs, jobs, and jobs. He says, you've got to make sure you've got jobs for your people. And as a legislator, you always put that first. You put the people that you are in charge of first, and you fight tooth and nail for those opportunities. And so Norm Dix, you know, he was uh, our legislator for many, many years, Mm -hmm. and he did that. So one of the reasons Kitsap County has done so economically in the shipyard is because he made sure that that money came our way. So I plan on doing exactly the same thing for the entire 35th once I'm in. Irene Bowling is running for 35th District Representative for Position 1, and now is your opportunity to uh, let us know one more time why we should pick you uh, in this election over your opponent. I'm a fighter. I've lived here forever. I'm an educator. I'm a mom, and I really deeply care about this. I have the intelligence, the education, and the background, and the experience with our, our counties here to be a good leader here, and I will do it. Irene Bowling, thanks for coming in this morning and talking with me. Thank you so much for your time.